Hello everybody, welcome to another Rusty Mats video and welcome to the year 9 series on algebra. You have been doing really well to keep up with me in this series and I'm sure that you are making a lot of good strides in your mathematics and your learning of mathematics. So now we are in this line and we are on our last topic in the line of factorizing. Let's bear in mind, in case you are wondering, um, hang on, there's so much more we could be doing in factorization. Don't forget that this is for year nine students. Um, and so if you're just learning this, this gives you the beginning, the foundation. When I get on to factorization in year 10 and year 11, it's going to be uh, yeah, a lot more tricky. So this is what I would normally do with year nine students. This is as far as they would go. Anyway, if you are now coming on to the series and you want to know what's going on, well, everything that's been highlighted are things we have done. And if you're worried about not being able to see them, click on the pop out banner up there. There's a playlist that's going to take you straight to this and you're going to see all these videos all in one place in a nice order, the way I've uploaded them. And that way you can follow the series in the most in the most sensible way so you understand what's going on. Everything that I do depends on something I've done before. So I will always tell you to click on a pop out banner if I think you need to go back to something. Anyway, without further ado, let's factorize some quadratics. Before we continue, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell so you will know as soon as a new video has landed. Okie dokie. So here I have some quadratics. Now let's talk first of all um, about this word quadratics and what it actually means. Now quadratics, uh, quadratic function, um, like you can see there right now, a quadratic expression is what I should say because I have to put it equal to y for it to become a function. Um, and then it'll actually equal to something. This is an expression. So this quadratic expression, how you know it is because the highest power of x is two. So the biggest power um, is two. Maybe if I learn to write properly, that would be good, wouldn't it? Biggest power is two, then it's a quadratic. If the biggest power is three, then it's a cubic and so on. But we're just going up to the power of two. So this is a quadratic. Now, the next thing that we need to worry about are some other words that I'm going to say. I will use words like coefficient. And this word coefficient means it's the number in front of the variable, okay? So for example, the coefficient of x is five, okay? In this one down here, the coefficient of x is three. The coefficient of x squared is 2, and so on. So listen now for that word coefficient. And if I say the word coefficient, that's what I mean. Another word that I will say would be constant. So the word constant. Why is that called a constant and the other one is called a coefficient? Have you figured it out? Well, the constant is 6. It has no variables next to it. It's not multiplied by any x's at all, which means that throughout any calculation that I do with that expression, that six will always be there, okay? It's a constant, it's always there. That's what that constant mean. Always there and it hasn't changed at all, okay? Like constant speed or constant acceleration and so on on a graph, so that's a constant. No shortcuts today. I am going to show you the long way because the long way is important. So the first thing that I need to do, job number one, Find two factors of the constant that adds or subtracts to give the coefficient of x. So in other words, in this first question, I want two factors of the constant that would add or subtract to give me the coefficient of x. The constant is six, the coefficient of x is five. So let's go work that out. I've got six. I want two factors of six that I can either add or subtract to give me five. Well, that has to be two and three, okay? Because two times three is six, 
and 2 add 3 equals 5. I'm good with that. If you were thinking 6 and 1, we'll find out a bit later why that was not correct, okay? Right, let's go. So then now, now that I've got the two numbers I'm going to do, now I'm going to go to my second, second thing I'm going to do. Replace, replace the um, middle term. In this case, I'm going to say 5x because if you rearrange that and you put something else in the middle, I don't want anyone to be confused. I'm replacing the term that has the x, okay? Replace the term with x is probably what I should say. So rather than middle term, if you're making notes, write down, replace the term with x. Um, with these two factors. So I've just got two factors of six, that gives me five. So I'm going to replace the middle term with those two factors. So what I'm going to have now is x squared add 2x plus 3x and then plus 6. Now, remember that video on the pop-out banner up there about identities? This is an identity here because the stuff I have at the top is equal to the stuff down below. All I did was rather than put 5x, I put 2x plus 3x. 2x plus 3x is still 5x. So those two are the same. So check that video out and then you're going to see what that's going to be all about. Now, what I've got now is um, I've got four terms. So I started with three. Now I've got four. And this is what I really wanted because in order to factorize my quadratic and get that beautiful double bracket, I need four terms. OK, click on the pop out banner up there and have a look at my last video on simple factorizations. Right at the end of that video, I talked about this anyway. So I'm going to split this straight down the middle like so. And then I'm going to factorize the bit, uh, the first two terms, actually. So the first two terms, the common factor here, x and x. So that's going to be x is extracted. And in the brackets, I'm going to have x add 2, because once I extract the x outside, then I'm going to have 1x there, and then the 2 goes in there. Now, I'm going to factorize the second half. And the common factor in the second half is 3, so I'm going to add 3 there. And then x add 2 goes there. Double check it, 3 times x, that's 3x, 3 times 2, that's 6, I am happy, okay? Now, I have got a pair of common factors, and those common factors are x plus 2. So extract that, and when I extract that, x plus 2 comes out there, and what's left to go in the brackets? Well, x and that 3, so x add 3. This is now finished. OK, beautiful. Now, it looked really long doing that, but it really isn't that long because remember, this stuff is going to be in your head. You're going to be sorted. You're going to be good to go. Um, and the only thing that's going to hold you back is if you don't know how to do your factors and if you don't know your times tables for your factors, click on the pop up banner up here and have a look at my video on factors so that you don't get lost in this section here, okay? All right, that's fantastic. Now, let's go on to the next question. Now, I took up a lot of space there doing that, didn't I? Um, let's go on to the next question, and then if I run out of space, I'm just gonna go onto a new page. So, first things first, find two factors of the constant. The constant is negative 18 this time. And that gives you the coefficient of x that gives me 3. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write it on the end here rather than take up a lot of space. So two factors of negative 18 is going to be 6 and negative 3. Now you have to think because I could just put 6 and 3, but 6 times 3 is positive 18. I want negative 18. And then you might ask yourself, why is it that the 3 is negative and not the 6? Well, I need to get 3. 
and it needs to either add or subtract. So six take away three is positive three. But if I put the negative on the six, then negative six plus three is negative three. I don't want negative three. I want a positive three. So there are lots of hoops you have to jump through, lots of things you have to think about before you choose who is negative and who is positive or if, there, if there's any negative at all. Okay, so the first thing, just repeating what I've just said, is I already knew one of my numbers had to be negative because in order to get negative 18, one of them has to be negative. And I just have to think about which one will be negative. Is it going to be the six or the three? It has to be the three because six take away three is positive three. Okay, good. Now I'm not going to change color. I'm just going to jump straight into setting it up. So x squared, um, add six x, take away three x, take away 18. So notice I replace the middle again, exactly what I said here. Replace this middle with these two factors, six and three. So negative positive six take away three. Double check it mentally. Does six take away three equal three? Yes, it does, okay? Now, we're going to split it down the middle like we did before, factorize the first half. Here we go. So on the first half, the common factor is x. So x add six. And then on the second half, the common factor is negative three because they're both negative there. So negative three, and then in the brackets, x add six. Now, as a rule of thumb, I'm gonna say this to you now. If you're doing this right, you will always get the same thing in the two brackets, okay? Well, at this stage anyway in maths, we're not on the big leagues yet where it can be different. But if you're doing it right, you're gonna get the same thing. Notice I got the same thing there as well. So now let's expand, let's, sorry, let's factorize. So we have got the same factor, x add six and x add six. And also check it, okay? Let me show you how. Minus three times x is minus three x, and negative three times positive six is negative 18. So I know it's correct, all right? Okay, so let's finish this off then. So the common factor is x add six, and then what's outside is x subtract three, and let's finish. And no, it does not matter which order you put it in. You can put this bracket first if you want. No one's going to judge you, okay? All right, that's fantastic. Okay, so we got two more to do. Um, that question D is going to be a bit of a doozy. So let's see how we get on with that. Now for this one then, let me scroll up. Oh, I've got, I've got a few more questions. Well, look at that. Okay, so let's go on to question C now. And I have got a lot of stuff in the way. So let's move them out of the way over there and say that this implies that, okay? Right, let's get on with this one. Same thing as we did before. I want two factors of negative 15. That's going to give me a negative two, all right? Now for 15, I already know I'm gonna to have to use three and five. One of them's gonna to have to be negative. To get negative 15, one of them will be negative. But which one? If I want negative two, the five has to be negative because three take away five is negative two. But if I make the three negative, it will be positive two. And we don't want that, we want negative two. All right, let's replace the middle and let's finish this off. So x, um, negative five x plus three x take away 15. We split it down the middle. Oh, sorry, I forgot my square. X and then X take away five. Plus three is the common factor and X take away five. Notice I'm going a lot faster this time because now you know what's going on. You should be able to fly through this now without even thinking that is finished. Now, normally I'd stop here but you might be one of those students who's gonna be aiming for much, much higher things in maths. So now I've got a couple of challenge questions for you. And what's different is now there is a coefficient in front of x squared, okay? There's a number in front there. So we need to add one more step, but everything else is the same. Now let's go back and just recap what we've just been doing. All of these ones, had one as the coefficient of x squared was just the number one. 
all right? So it was easy. I just literally said, find two factors of the constant um, that gives you um, the middle number, and then you replace those middle numbers. So if you have a number other than one as the coefficient of x squared, then you, I will put this as a, as a one, a, as it were, because this really should come first up there. So what, what would you do if there's a number there? Well, the first thing you do is multiply the coefficient of x squared with the constant. When you finish multiplying the coefficient of x squared with the constant, we will now modify the second step. And now you need to find um, two factors of this new number. So we do everything else the same, okay? So rather than what we did here, we need to put this step in. Multiply the coefficient of x squared with the constant. Then we here find two factors of this new number that add and subtract to give you the coefficient of x. Let's go put all that into some good workings out. And if I'm going too fast, please slow the video down, rewind, listen to my words, okay? I use a lot of rich words in these things. Um, and if you forget what any of these words mean, go back to the beginning of the video and remember what the constant is and what the coefficient is, okay? All right, let's go back to what I just said now. So now I've got a coefficient of x squared and I've got a constant. So multiply those two first. 2 times 6 equals 12. Now I want two factors of 12 that will give me th my negative 13. So what will my two factors be? Well, it's going to have to be 12 and 1 because the other two factors of 12 would be 4 and 3 and they can't give me 13. 6 and 2 those cannot give me 13, but 12 and 1 can. But notice that my 13 is negative. That means I'm going to need some negatives. So negative 12 and negative 1. Let's check that we're still okay. Negative times negative is positive 12. And negative 12 take away 1 is negative 13. So that's what I'm going to replace the middle with now. So now I'm going to have 2x squared negative 12x, take away that 1x plus 6. So I've replaced my 13x with negative 12, negative 1. Same as we did before, split down the middle. What's the common factor in the first half or the first two terms? Well, it's 2x. 2x times x is 2x squared, and 2x times 6 is 12. Common factor in the second half, negative 1. And then I should have the same thing in those brackets. Double check it. Negative 1 times x, negative x. Negative 1 times negative 6, positive 6. We're good to go. Now you can see my common factor is there and there. So take those out. x take away 6. What's left? 2x take away 1. This is now finished. Okay? Pause the video, have a go at the last one, but I'm going to jump straight into it now. Here we go. Let's finish this video off. The video feels like it's a bit long. So the first thing we do, there is another number other than 1 in front of x. So my coefficient of x squared is 3. So let's multiply that out. 3 times negative 6. Well, that's going to be negative 18. Ooh, deep. So that's negative 18. Now, I want two factors of negative 18. That's going to give me negative 7 if I add or subtract. And what two factors will those be? Well, I know it's going to have to be 9 and 2 because 9 take away 2 is 7. But I need to make sure which one I put the negative for. It has to be the correct one. Okay? So, it'll have to be negative 9 in this case because negative 9 add 2 is negative 7. All right? So... 9 and 2. And negative 9 times 2 is negative 18. I'm good with that. All right, good. Let's go now. So 3x squared, take away 9x, add 2x, take away 6. So just replace that negative 7 with 9 and 2. Now we split that straight down the middle. 
3x is the common factor, so x take away 3 goes in the bracket. And then the plus 2 comes outside and x take away 3 goes in the bracket again. Always check it. 2 times x, 2x, 2 times negative 3, negative 6. I'm good. I've got this as my common factor now. So that implies that my answer is x minus 3 and 3x add 2. All right. All right, guys, this was a pretty long one, <laughs> you know, um, but I hope you've learned something new. If you have, give this video a like. Don't forget to subscribe down below and don't forget to hit that notification bell. So the minute a new video comes online, you will know about it. I hope you're enjoying the series. Thank you for making it this far to the end of the video. And um, yeah, that is factorizing quadratics done and dusted. Until I see you on the next one. Peace.